All right, hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back for another gaming hardware review with the Stream Deck pedal. What is it? It's a foot pedal with three buttons that allow you to keybind pretty much anything on your computer from basic key bindings in games and Discord to advanced functions in places like OBS, Stream Deck, and uh, Streamlabs so that you can make it a little easier to control different functions while you're trying to stream. All right, so let's take a look at this bad boy. So here it is. This is the pedal itself. It's got three main buttons here, here, and here, as you can kind of figure. And then each one of them has like a kind of nice press spring loaded action. And if you don't quite like the springs that come with it pre-installed, they also have several different retensile or uh, tension springs that you can swap in and out if you just unscrew a couple of screws on the back and then they just go right behind this plate right here in four different spots. So relatively easy to unpack and use. You just pop it out of the box, plug in the USB three plug in the back here, and then you know it's working because the little blue light turns on. And then it also comes with a built in driver that allows you to easily rebind anything on your computer. And then it also has a little heads up display to remind you what button does what. It's actually kind of handy. So I think what we'll do is we'll start out with a little unboxing so you can see what all is actually in the box when you buy this bad boy. So the Stream Deck pedal comes in a nice little box, makes it real easy to store it as well if you wanna take it with you to like go stream at an event or maybe if you like to go do LAN parties with your friends. And then on the box, it kind of gives you an idea of some of the various things that it can do. You can rebind different key bindings to it, like basically anything on your keyboard or your mouse can be bound as just a basic system key binding to one of the buttons. And then it also has various apps available in the program itself that make it easy to interface with things like OBS Streamlabs, OBS, and different Twitch apps as well. So the whole thing, to make sure they've sealed in the freshness, comes with like a sealed pull tab, kind of like you're, you know, going to the frozen food section at the store and you rip one of those tabs off of like frozen chicken to cook. And then inside, a cat is sold separately, just in case you were curious. That's my cat, Kodo. Um, inside is the pedal itself, the Stream Deck pedal, wrapped in a nice little insulating foam pouch to keep the static away. It's got an instruction booklet, the warranty manual, and then several different sets of different tension springs that you can swap in and out of the actual pedal so that it kind of fits to your liking and has the right amount of feedback when you try to press it with your foot. And then there's also a USB-C cable and it's about 16 foot long. So no matter where in your like office or your room or your living room, you have your main computer set up, you probably have enough cord in the box to run the pedal wherever you end up sitting, which is kind of nice. I mean, there's definitely people that do things like VR streaming that might like a foot pedal. And then here you can see the different tensile strengths of spring. They go from like the basic 1000 that's in it all the way up to 2000. I'm not really sure um, what controls that or not like what, what gauge that's based on. And then of course, when you actually open up the package itself, you can see the foot pedal. It's actually really nice. It's like a nice, thick, heavy plastic so that you can really mash this with your foot and you don't have to worry about breaking it. And then on the back, there's ease of access to access the inside panel to replace the springs with just six really easy to remove screws that sit inside of each one of those little rubber foot pads. All right, so we've taken a look at the unboxing for this bad boy. It's a, it's a very sturdy foot pedal. I mean, it's exactly what you would want in a three button pedal. It, you can bash the shit out of it with your feet so that it, it, and it'll still stay in one piece so you don't have to worry about it falling to pieces on you. And then it's really easy to bind. So I guess the next thing we'll do is make sure you plug this bad boy in when you get yours. And let's go take a look at what the setup is like. So let's go take a look at the, what the setup is like. Make sure you plug in yours at home and we'll go take a look at the actual software. 
Okay, so let's have a look see at what the actual driver itself looks like. So when you first boot it up, it's going to look something like this. On the left hand side, this little weird window with three little squares in it, this is a reminder that sits on top of all of your different software on your screen as to which one of the buttons does what on your Stream Deck pedal. That way, when you're first starting to get used to it and starting to use it, you don't get confused as to what you bound where because you can actually set up labels to remind yourself what's what, which I think is actually kind of handy. Um, and then over here on the right side is your main Stream Deck driver. This controls your Stream Deck itself and also your Stream Deck pedal and basically all of the different devices under the umbrella of Stream Deck. If you needed to, you could click on the Stream Deck pedal label at the top of the screen and you could swap between your different devices or if you want to use your phone as a touchscreen Stream Deck without having to buy like the big console, you could also add the app and then set that up here. But what we want to do is we want to fill out these three blanks here with different key binding functions so that we can use this pedal to its fullest extent. And as you see in the sidebar here, there's a bunch of different stuff right out of the box that this driver can do. Down here under Stream Deck itself, you can switch profiles, you can do multi-action, or you can do like a series of different actions in a row. You can do a multi-action switch, random action, a timer, all that good stuff. If you wanted to use Streamlabs, you could start, stop recording and streaming, change your sources. Under System, you can open up a website, you can change your hotkey, you can open up a piece of software or input a pre-designated like chunk of text. If you want to say like, good game everybody at the end of a match in League, you could. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, one of their newest features is the ability to bind different functions inside of Discord voice chat. So, so the first thing I want to do is let's do our push to talk. We'll click and drag it over here. And we'll just call this the D for Discord PTT or push to talk. And then I'm going to align that text at the bottom of the icon. So one of the nice things about Stream Deck is they actually let you make it a little bit easier to tell what button does what. So if you don't want to label it, you can just go click on this little pull down menu and you can set it from a file. Or if you click on this button, create new icon, Elgato actually has a built in icon maker on their website where you can like throw in a picture of like a light bulb and then you can put in like make it red and then you can make like the background blue and then you hit save key and it'll save that as an icon to your computer so that you can use it for whatever you want or you can also just open up the steam stream deck icon library where they have a bunch of pre-designated icons that you can pick from as well if you don't like whatever they start with for a certain button. So like I could just say like a chat window better represents Discord to me personally and then that'll become the button both in here and in this little side uh, tray that tells me what my buttons do. So that's my push to talk and that in theory when you log into a Discord voice chat channel should just activate your push to talk button. Next up um, I like the ability to be able to record with OBS. So I'm going to set my record button over here and I'm going to just call this like OBS record along the bottom. And then they have like a better icon. Let's do this one. I like that better for like recording your footage from OBS. And then the last thing I, I find myself doing when I record gameplay is I find myself opening up a lot of windows on my computer that allow me to like Google things. So let's make a Google button. Where is my system? Here it is. So this is your computer system. And from here we can pop in website. And this will ask you like, what do you want to do with this? So I'll just say this is my search. And then this will just open google.com. And then now if I open up my web browser and I hit my middle button, boom, it'll open up my Google search and I can be like, um, let's look up Moonlighter Wiki uh, recipes because I play a lot of that Moonlighter dungeon crawler game. So now I can quickly, whenever I want to look up something new, I can just 
hit the button, it'll pop open a new tab, probably tab me out of my game, and allow me to, like, look up, uh, where are all the hidden things in Rally? And then I'll find a guide to the art of Rally on how to find all of the hidden Rally letters so I can unlock all the free roam missions or whatever. So that's one thing that you can do, which is kind of handy. The next thing you can do is if we pop open Discord and I pop into my test server, let's pop into the Listen Here channel and let's see if my left button will activate my push to talk. So I'm clicking it. Unfortunately, it's activating the push to mute, which would work if I had voice activation enabled, but that's not quite what I want to do. So let's see if we can fix that. Let's delete this function. So I did have push to talk. Pop that in there. And then does that... It looks like they've confused push to mute or mute toggle with the push to talk, but until that's fixed, there's actually another way that we can do this. So under system, we can just pop in a hotkey. And then this is now my Discord PTT. And now I can just click the tilde key, which is the, the button next to the number one on your keyboard. And that's usually my push to talk. So now when I go back over into Discord, I can just click on that button. When I unmute myself, I can just click on that button and now you can see that my push to talk hotkey is in fact lighting up. Now the one downside to using a physical hotkey as opposed to a function key is that if I accidentally like hit the text field at the bottom of the screen and I hit the hotkey, it'll start typing out the tilde key repeatedly. And I don't necessarily want it to do that. So let's look at what other stuff that we can do with this program. So one of the things that comes with this driver pre-installed is voice mod. So I could do some different voice filters for fun if I wanted to pretend I wasn't like the person I am. We've also got the soundboard feature. We could just play a sound when we hit that third button on the right. We could do something with Streamlabs. And we also have this whole store of stuff that you can download functions and features for your setup directly through this interface. So this is initially where I went to plugins and I looked up Discord and found the Discord control made by Elgato. And there are also some other ones in here too, like you can do the, num the member count inside of your server, Discord Messenger, Volume Mixer and all that stuff. But you can also just kind of browse around popular plugins like there's a lot of different audio control center stuff. You can activate Spotify integration so you can play music on stream. There's different engagement tools and you can also change the RGB setup in your Philips Hue bulbs if you have those in your office. Like if you're going to get dramatic, you can hit a button to like activate the red light. There's a YouTube feature to control YouTube. Let's install that one. That one sounds kind of handy. And they install pretty quickly. They're only like a few kilobytes in size. They actually show you down here at the bottom, like how big the download is. And then we can just exit out of the store and then find the new YouTube control, which is down here. Oh, they've got like, oh, so this is like streaming. So you can activate like the chat message or see who, how many viewers you have. Okay, that's kind of neat. So I would definitely recommend this. And this particular product is retailing for around 80 to $90. I'm sure depending on where you buy it and when you buy it from this point onwards, because it just came out, that this might fluctuate and get a little bit cheaper depending on where you get it. Um, the, the installation is as simple as plug this in with the 16 foot long USB cord that it comes with, and then just download the drivers. It detected almost immediately for me because I plugged this in before I installed them and then you can start key binding. Um, and I, I like the idea that you can use this as kind of like your universal push to talk key, because one of the problems that I have is my tilde key, my favorite push to talk key, is often used in other programs as like access to the command console, access to like the photo mode, stuff like that, and it's kind of annoying. But with this, I could key bind a crazy long key binding combination 
and then this would handle it for me instead of having to like press and hold it myself. So I actually kind of like that. You could also do like stop and start recording. You can switch scenes and things like OBS when you're streaming, or maybe you hit a button to use the hue, but the Philips hue bulb like app, and then you could suddenly go into DEF CON 5 in your COD game or whatever. There's a lot of fun things that you could do with this. And I like the idea of having more buttons that I can use than just with my hands. So yeah, check it out for yourselves. There's a lot of media out there about it. It literally just came out. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have a good one, everybody. I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description below. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.